Jesus is grace on thee. When crowned thy good with brotherhood, from sea to shining sea. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. 245 years of independence, and that's why we are also able to gather here because of Christ giving us an independence. God, who is almighty, who has been acknowledged by our fathers, the framers of this independence. God, the almighty, has given us also this wonderful prayer of the Eucharist to thank him for the gift of freedom. May our freedom be always set in the truth of Christ. As St. Paul would always say, we are set free through Christ. Coming together as God's family, with confidence we ask God for his pardon. You heal the sick, Lord have mercy. You rescue us sinners, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father and give us freedom through his truth. Lord have mercy. And may the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. As the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking say to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Hard of face and obstinate of heart are they to whom I am sending you. But you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. And whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. The word of the Lord. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. To you I lift up my eyes, who are enthroned in heaven, as the eyes of servants are on the hands of their masters. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. As the eyes of a maid are on the hands of her mistress, so are our eyes on the Lord our God, till he have pity on us. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. Have pity on us, O Lord, have pity on us. For we are more than sated with contempt. Our souls are more than sated with the mockery of the arrogant, with the contempt of the proud. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, 
pleading for his mercy. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan, to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses in order that the power of Christ may dwell with me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will have eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary? and the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place, and among his own kin, and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying hands, his hands, on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In 2011, I was assigned for my first pastor assignment in St. Isabella in Marin County, coming from here. And the first day of school, I went to the school to visit the classrooms. But before going to the classrooms, I noticed right away that the flag of the school was a little bit torn. And I said to the principal and to the teachers there, let's buy a new flag and replace that flag. It's too old. And then they told me, oh, you're so patriotic. I never thought about, I was never called a patriotic. I just say that when there is a flag, I always respect the flag. When I was a third grader, and this is in the Philippines, where we were always told in the Philippines, respect the flag. You salute the flag. You even put your heart, put your hand on your, put your hand on your heart to pay your respect to the flag. When I was a third grader, I was asked, as we were all asked to volunteer to be traffic leaders 
when there is a flag ceremony or flag retreat. And even you're just a third grader, you would be asked to do that. And it was my turn to go for flag retreat. And I felt when I was just doing the traffic, traffic rules, I had to go to the bathroom for, to do number one. And since my teachers told me that you have to stand, you don't, you don't go anywhere when there is a flag ceremony or flag retreat. When the national anthem is sung and the flag is being raised or a flag is, um, is there's a retreat of the flag, you have to stand there, stand still, don't go anywhere. And so I had to force myself to stand there. That's how I was thinking of, we really respect the flag that even the call of nature would not even stand before the flag. And so I was thinking, that flag was always respected. But many times, flags are not respected. 245 years of independence here in the United States. We want to thank the Lord for this gift of independence. My family, many of us here, came probably because of that independence. I can say for myself that compared to where I came, there's a lot of things here that are much, much, much better. And we salute one symbol that would give that to us, and that is the flag. But Independence Day is given to us with that symbol of the flag to remind us what the framers or the signers of the Declaration of Independence had intended for this country. Many things are said in the Declaration of Independence, but perhaps for us, Christians, Catholics, the ones that would be very important for us to think, to remember, and to reflect are the words and the many times that God has been named in that Declaration of Independence. At least four times our forefathers had said and had acknowledged God in order for us to have this independence, in order for us to have this flag. God as a transcendent God, God as a providential God, God as our judge or the supreme judge and lawgiver, and God as the God of creation. Four times at least this were acknowledged by our framers. Although only one was Catholic to sign the Declaration of Independence because of history, Charles Carroll was named to be one of the signees. Most of them were Christians. Most of them believe in God. Most of them know and acknowledge that this country would have independence from the Word of God, through the Word of God, by the Word of God. God as a transcendent God has given us so much in this country that we want to acknowledge Him. God as the lawgiver, and that's why we all have the name God in many of our buildings government buildings. We ask 245 years after and going to our 250th year where we would celebrate this big time. We ask, are we still living on the spirit that our fathers, the signers of the Declaration of Independence had? I would say that America is still very religious, spiritual. But there are many times that our religion 
or the God that we put in the Declaration of Independence is not respected, or there are many currents where they want to abolish that. Some would say that because we are free, then we should take that God name out because we are free. But the framers of the Constitution and the signers of the Declaration of Independence historically had made God and put God there because God is the one who would set us free. And what is the one that would set us free in God? God as the truth. God as the giver of that truth would set us free. And just as the gospel would tell us, the truth would set us free. It is the one that our forefathers had been thinking. If we are looking for freedom, and if we are looking for what would make us independent, and if we are really fighting against the king of England to show our independence, our only material weapon, armory, is God, and the truth of God would set us free. We are here to thank the Lord for these fathers of our independence, because they thank the Lord that we are here, that we are here to be independent, live the truth of Christ. Those Christians, signers, would want us to follow that. This is founded in God. And God would set us free through His truth because the truth would set us free. As there are many currents who would be against that, we should be still a formidable current to be able to fight and to stand firm for the truth or to respect the flag that would represent that we are a nation founded in God with the truth of God. It says here in the gospel, a prophet is not without honor except in his native place. Unfortunately, it could happen here in the United States of America also, where our framers had considered God to be the God of the truth and that would be the one that would set us free, but yet there are many groups that would not welcome him, and they really try their best to not honor him in a place where our forefathers would want us to know God and acknowledge God. But there are people, unfortunately, who would not like to acknowledge God in this place, rooted in the truth of God. He was not accepted in his own native place. He is not accepted in some people here in this place of the United States. But yet, we are here to pray as a nation, as a nation that we would still hold into the truth of Christ and the truth of God that would set us free, because the truth would set us really free. And as St. Paul had said, you are set free in Christ. We would be set free in Christ. And we pray also for those people who don't acknowledge Christ or would not welcome Christ in this place. As he was not welcomed in this native place, he could not be welcomed here in this place. But we pray for those people that little by little, they know also that they would acknowledge God and would welcome God eventually. Just as some of us, when we were not catechized yet or evangelized, we did not know about God. But we try and we give our evangelization, our mission, our ministry, so that they too, they too would be able to see the truth of Christ 
the truth that would really make them free and would set them free. May God, who has given us always this country, imperfect as it is, a free country and independence, would give us the authentic independence for us to live in this truth and that we would always fight for his authentic truth. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds in the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For our general intercession, I lead you into this general intercession using the prayer of Archbishop John Carroll. Archbishop John Carroll was a cousin of Charles Carroll, who was one of the signers of our Declaration of Independence. As the first Archbishop, he wanted to pray for all of us. We pray, Almighty and Eternal God, who through Jesus Christ has revealed thy glory to all nations to preserve the works of your mercy, that your church, being spread through the whole world, may continue with unchanging faith in the confession of your name. We pray thee, who alone are good and holy, to endow with heavenly knowledge, sincere zeal, and sanctity of life. Our chief bishop, the Pope, the vicar of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the government of his church, our own bishop, all other bishops, prelates, pastors of the church, and especially those who are appointed to exercise among us the functions of holy ministry and conduct your people into the ways of salvation. We pray, O God of might, wisdom and justice, through whom authority is rightly administered, laws are enacted, and judgment decreed. Assist with your spirit of counsel and fortitude the President of this United States, that his administration may be conducted in righteousness and be eminently useful to your people, over whom he, she presides by encouraging due respect for virtue and religion, by a faithful execution of the laws in justice and mercy, and by restraining vice and immorality. Let the light of your divine wisdom direct the deliberations of Congress and shine forth in all the proceedings and laws framed for our rule and government, so that they may tend to the preservation of peace the promotion of national happiness, the increase of industry, and 
sobriety, and useful knowledge, and may perpetuate to us the blessings of equal liberty. We pray for His Excellency, the Governor of the States, for the members of the Assembly, for all judges, magistrates, and other officers who are appointed to guard our political welfare, that they may be enabled by your powerful protection to discharge the duties of their respective stations with honesty and ability. We recommend, likewise, to your unbounded mercy, all our brethren and fellow citizens throughout the United States, that they may be blessed in the knowledge and sanctified in the observance of your most holy law, that they may be preserved in union and in that peace which the world cannot give, and after enjoying the blessings of this life, be admitted to those which are eternal. Finally, we pray to you, O Lord of mercy, to remember the souls of your servants departed, who are gone before us with sign of faith and repose in the sleep of peace, the souls of our parents, relatives, and friends, of those who, when living, were members of this congregation, and particularly of such as are lately deceased, of all benefactors who by their donations or legacies to this church witnessed their zeal of decency of divine worship and proved their claim to our grateful and charitable remembrance. To these, O Lord, and to all the rest in Christ, grant, we beseech you, a place of refreshment light and everlasting peace to the same Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Let's give a big hand to our nation for this 245th year of celebrating its birthday and independence. <clears throat> Please be seated for the announcement. We continue to thank you for your flexibility and for your patience. Yes, indoor worship would still need mass to be on, and that would include other services, including weddings or baptisms and other events indoors. For those of you who have difficulty or you have a personal and physical difficulty wearing the mask, you may not wear a mask, but it is not optional. It is a requirement. We thank all of you for your continued support to our parish. We want to be back to the normal. Our parish is open, especially for this church building, for public service. Monday to Friday from 12 noon to 4.30, this church would be open. Our offices are open also for business transactions. We want to thank also all our volunteers. If you want to volunteer, please call our parish office. Thank you.
pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours would become acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and ever to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as to your beloved Son, you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you form it anew, giving the church teaching and his truth. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we do extol you with all the angels and saints, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gifts to pray. By sending us your spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to the fellows worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. You must especially pray for the soul of Bernice Brennan, Richard, and Joseph McEachran, and for the intentions of St. Gregory parishioners, for departed family members and those who may have been forgotten, those who sacrifice their lives for our freedom, and those who fight always for the truth that would set us free. Have mercy on us, O Lord, we pray, that through the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the health of the sick, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, all the apostles, all the saints, with Gregory the Great, our patron, as they have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare now to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ said to the apostles, Peace I live you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, on our imperfection, but on our firm faith in you, our fight for the truth and living, searching always for authentic truth. And grant us the peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a socially distant sign of peace. Onius Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Onius Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Onius Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold Jesus, behold him, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He is the way, the truth, and the life, the truth that would set us free. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, it is not worth it that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen.
second collection is for our religious education program. Thank you so much for your generosity and your support to our religious education program. Grant, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and ever cease to praise you through Christ, our Lord. I thank you all for coming here to celebrate with us Eucharist in person here at St. Gregory Church. But I welcome also those who are live streaming with us who may not be able to come here because of their circumstance. We as a nation, we are united to thank the Lord for the gift of independence. I've mentioned that there's only one signer of the Declaration of Independence who is Catholic. And there's a history of that because we as Catholics 245 years ago or 300 years ago, we were always, we were always suspected to be always faithful to the Pope. And so we were called to be Papist. And since the Pope then had so much power in the world, they don't want that to happen, that the Pope would have so much influence here in the United States. And so that's why they formed Maryland, Maryland in Baltimore, so that the Catholics could stay there and then they can have their own freedom of expression of their religion. And the history was that the Carols were invited to do also the Declaration of Independence. But we as Catholics, we support our signers of the Constitution and the independence and independence. We as Catholics, we are there with them because God was there. They are our Christian brothers and sisters. And we as Catholics, we are thankful to them that just as they are able to have this religious freedom, we too are able to gather also as Catholics, still loyal to our Pope, Loyal to God, most especially because He is the source of truth. But that has become our nation, and we are proud of this nation, and we should be. The Lord be with you. And may the Almighty God bless us all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.